G'day, I'm Bob Brown, and we're going to the Tarkines Rivers with Todd Walsh, who's going to show us one of the world's most extraordinary creatures. The headwaters of these rivers start in, in areas of button grass or tea tree, then through the undergrowth, through the man ferns, and then finally through larger trees as, they, as the river itself opens up and heads towards the sea. And those rivers themselves can actually hit the sea in a, in a tannin-stained form or in a bright clear form, depending on the river. And that could be only like 10 kilometres apart between having a river hit the ocean completely tannin-stained to have a river hit the ocean completely clear. And that's the uniqueness of, of this area. So you can have water that's quite acidic in one location and 10 kilometres along you can have water that's quite neutral and quite clear that's running into the same ocean just because of the uh, material that it runs through on its journey from the hills to the sea. Walking to these rivers you'll walk under uh, giant man ferns which are the whole canopy in some areas and then you'll walk through ferns that are knee high until you get to a river that's covered in, in lots of logs, but also dogwoods, sassafras, myrtles, eucalypts, and the whole canopy can change. And those logs tend to have lots of moss running down the sides, and even the riverbank itself has moss running down to where the river actually meets the rock. And so it really does give a prehistoric feel that is unlike most places on the planet. The Tarkine Wilderness is home to hundreds of creeks, rivers and other waterways. And in these waterways you'll find often snags of logs that have come down from the bush and in floods and in high winds that just make these log jams here, which is a perfect habitat to find one of the major creatures that live in the Tarkine itself. And oh look, there's one just right here, just come out. And this is uh, the world's largest freshwater in invertebrate. It's a a small version at the moment, but this fella here is the Tasmanian giant freshwater crayfish. Now it's the world's largest freshwater invertebrate, but this one is a very small version, will grow to probably 10 times this size, so he's probably about half a kilo at the moment. He will grow to 5 kilo plus if he's lucky, and probably a metre outstretched from tail to claw. And we will look for, for more of these around this region, but it's a good example just to find one. This is a young adult, and he's only just made adulthood. And so we can tell that he's a male. He's got these two sperm sacs right above my fingers there. And his habitat is around this log jam because he can hide from predators here. He also has his food supply within close reach, which is normally you no know, rotting woody debris, rotting leaves, twigs, and some invertebrates, and a fish if he's lucky enough to catch one but his whole life cycle can basically um, revolve around being able to hide under this log jam here. So it's very important that we recognise that these areas need all this timber for shade to keep the, the river cool, but also for habitat and a food supply. So we'll pop him back and we'll probably have a look and see if we can find something a bit bigger. There you go, mate. So here we have a good sized female, she's pushing two kilo. It's really important to understand that these things get to six kilograms. So she's only a third weight, but quite a large female nevertheless, uh, a nice blue color. Now, as they've had a few um, generations of breeding, they will tend to go a blue color, the larger females. And so she's probably had three or four different um, crops of young ones. If uh, look underneath, you can see that uh, this is where the eggs will be held under the tail. They don't like that being opened up. She's also quite heavily infested with flatworms. Um, and you can see their cases on the side here. Now it's really important to understand this is the world's largest freshwater invertebrate. And she's about the third of the weight that they can get to. And so it's very, very important in, in the Tarkine and in Northern Tassie in general that we look after what's left of these magnificent creatures' habitat 
these, these giant crayfish actually feed on decaying wood. So they will feed on, on ferns and stuff that hang into the water, but most of the time they'll scrape bits of rotting wood, like down here and, and around here, and they'll actually feed on that, and that's got fungus in it, which has a bit of protein for them. It's not a rich diet, but it keeps, keeps them going. And you can see over near my left hand here, all the woody debris and the leaves that fall in, that's all lobster food, and food for their other food source, which is the invertebrates and insect and fish species that hang around as well. Uh, looking along the banks, you'll see it's all moss covered. It's quite low at the moment, but uh, in winter time that'll rise by a metre or more. And you'll see there's holes and, and embankments there they can actually crawl into and, and live in. So they can hide in holes under the banks, they can also hide under logs and in these big log jams over here. And that's, that's the home of a lobster. And with a shaded canopy that's providing a food source, you've got the ultimate um, freshwater crayfish uh, habitat. My connection to this animal goes back uh, probably three or four generations. My, my great grandfather, my grandfather, my father all caught and ate these things, and so did I as a young fella. And then the, ta the tables turn, the tide turns, I guess, and you realise that you've got to um, become a conservation minded person because uh, we are losing this bush at a rapid rate of knots. And I guess it's ex fishermen like me that are just run of the mill average Joes that decide, well, hang on, we need to do something about this. And, Basically, I come from, from families who used to catch and eat them, but always held them in high regard. And the rivers and that, I mean, just because we're fishermen doesn't mean we wanted to destroy their habitat. We just like going there. And so it's just um, probably a natural progression in some ways that uh, I turned into um, a lobster protector, I guess. That's why the tarquine is so important. This is just one of those species that that region is home to that we can preserve. And we really need to make sure that we look after these areas simply because this is what's there. Great bush, great creeks, great rivers, log jams. This is how things used to look. And they don't look like this anymore in Tasmania. The tarquine is simply too important to lose.